Millipedes are a fascinating group of arthropods that unfortunately tend to get overlooked on my channel in favour of their distant cousins, the centipedes. And while I did give them some much needed time in the spotlight during my recent video from the trip to Mount Cordo, I still think they deserve a bit more recognition. Especially since in recent weeks, a new species has been discovered, and it's a very noteworthy one. Finding a new species is always exciting, but it's even more so when said species is far unlike anything ever known before. An extra layer of icing on the cake, so to speak. The name millipede has long been considered something of a misnomer. While they undeniably have a large number of legs, none possessed the thousand legs that their name implies, with the record, a Californian species called Ilacme plenipes, sitting at approximately 750. But honestly, I don't really blame the person who came up with the name millipede for its inaccuracy. I can only imagine how it went. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, so... There's a lot left, isn't there? Ah, screw it, just say a thousand. But yeah, now for the first time in forever, there is a millipede that lives up to its name. The Goldfields region of Western Australia, from which a couple of my centipedes hail, is a resource-rich area that is consequently subjected to mining activity. Geological drill holes bored deep into the earth to examine the minerals that abound beneath the surface also happen to provide a portal to a mysterious world of subterranean animals. In one such drill hole, a small thread-like millipede was discovered at an astonishing depth of 60 metres. But this animal's habitat was far from its only noteworthy aspect. Its legs, presumably counted by someone with far more patience than myself, were almost twice as numerous as those of Ilacme plenipes, numbering 1,306, easily living up to the title that every other millipede has fallen well short of. Indeed, it is now the leggiest animal known. The drill holes provided access to a region composed of banded iron formations and mafic volcanic rocks, a known habitat for subterranean organisms. And traps set at depths between 15 and 60 metres yielded a total of eight specimens of this awe-inspiring new species. The millipede was named Eumillipes persephone, placed in a new genus that currently only contains this species. The genus name, Eumillipes, essentially means true millipede, owing to the fact that this is the first species of millipede known for which the name is not a misnomer. Oh, also kind of unrelated, but I've only managed to find three photos of this species. So instead of looping the same images for the entire video, which is of course going to be very, very boring, I'm just going to use random footage of millipedes, because at least there's some variety there. Eumillipes persephone bears a resemblance to the millipedes of the family Siphonohynidae, such as Ilacme plenipes. But electron microscopy and genome sequencing of the specimens suggested they are not as closely related as their appearances would suggest. With their striking anatomical similarities, both being incredibly elongated animals, having occurred as a result of convergent evolution. Convergent evolution, where equivalent traits arise in separate organisms independently, typically as a result of being exposed to similar selective pressures, is a common phenomenon that can present something of a problem when it comes to classifying life forms as it can cause taxa to appear to be much more closely related than they actually are. It is a major reason why genetic analysis is of such importance when it comes to understanding the relationships between organisms, as it is not subject to the same fallibilities as examination of an organism's morphology alone. Eumillipes has been classed within a separate family to Ilacme, 
the Siphonotidae within the order Polyzonida. Super elongation, the presence of over 180 segments, seems to have evolved multiple times independently among millipedes, as indicated by the bold branches on this millipede phylogeny, and it appears to be an adaptation for a subterranean lifestyle. In the tight confines of these millipedes' habitat, long legs are something of a hindrance, so shorter legs are of great benefit. However, there is a trade-off. A reduction in leg size is generally accompanied by a corresponding reduction in their strength. So they cannot generate as much of a push, and this is likely compensated for by an increase in their amount. I guess in this case, quantity is better than quality. Unlike the rigid segments of the more familiar millipedes such as Dulaformids and Polydesmids, the segments of these super elongated species are compressible, allowing the animal to squeeze through narrow fissures and providing an additional pushing force alongside that of the legs. The convergent evolution of highly elongate forms in such environments is by no means limited to millipedes either. Other subterranean animals such as earthworms and geophilomorph centipedes are superficially similar in appearance and locomote in a comparable manner. So there we have it, that's this video finished. Now this video was somewhat delayed and I'm sorry about that, and some of you may know why. That is because I am working on a Guide to Australian Spiders series. I haven't actually done any videos yet but I've been doing quite a lot of illustrations and that's fairly time consuming so I've kind of had to push back my schedule when it comes to uploading. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, feel free to subscribe and check out some of my other uploads and let me know what you thought in the comments as well. Thank you very much for watching, that is it from me and I shall see you again very soon.